I know this must be confusing for you. I'm sitting over here now. What we're doing is something a bit different. <laughs> this is my new character. I'm Dr. Jim, as you'll see. I've got, like, a skeleton and a scale and a diploma. We've really... I'm not wearing a white coat or a stethoscope or anything. I'm not really committing to this bit. <laughs> I'm just here to deliver my diagnosis. America is sick and the illness is this. This country thinks of healthcare not as a right, but as a privilege. But you don't have the right to roads or clean water or the police, yet we take all of that for granted. I would gladly live in a Mad Max wasteland if it meant free healthcare. <laughs> yes, we're a society of fuel hoarding cannibals, but the Thunderdome has an excellent outpatient <laughs> clinic. <laughs> healthcare is the one thing that is not a public service. Why do I have to pay for healthcare when the fire department is free? I know how to put out a small fire. I don't know how to get rid of a little bit of AIDS. <laughs> Somehow the rest of the world has it figured out. These are the countries with universal healthcare. And that means free healthcare for everyone. And I mean free. This transplant costs tens of thousands of dollars. But under Britain's National Health Service, or NHS, the patient doesn't pay a thing. Yep, that's the country you fought so hard to leave, America. <laughs> you really showed them for taxing your tea, didn't you? <laughs> See, why is this country so sickened by universal health care? Let me describe your symptoms and see if I can clear them up. First complaint. Universal health care means the government decides who lives and who dies. And yes, it's true. Any health care system has a limited amount of money. So some patients will take priority over others. Let me put this in medical terms. Say you're a rapper on a budget <laughs> and you're at a club and you're pouring champagne over all the bitches. Now, <laughs> ideally, all the bitches would get wet, but you've only got so much champagne <laughs> and there are a lot of bitches. So you have to prioritise which bitches ought to get the wettest. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, this is obviously... <laughs> Obviously, that's a hypothetical, of course. I don't approve of that. I would never do that. Because I'm a beer guy. <laughs> when I go to the club, I'm like, yeah, those yeasty-smelling girls are with me. <laughs> Anywho, public health is like that. Another complaint about universal health care is who's going to pay for it? I'll tell you who. Me. Me and the rest of the 1%. All I want is a prescription for Oxycontin. Yeah, just give it to me. I, I don't want to have any hassle. I told you, I have a sore foot. <laughs> Look, I know that universal healthcare works because I have personally benefited from it. In 2004, I was attacked in Great Britain. They fixed me up in the hospital and three days later, I just walked out, all for free. They didn't ask for identification. I wasn't even a British citizen. Grant you, I didn't get the deluxe treatment in the hospital. I was basically in the drunk <laughs> ward. It, it was Saturday night. Everyone there had cuts in their faces from being glassed. That's right. The British are the only people who use the word glass as a verb. <laughs> I've seen how the system works firsthand, and it can work here. I have a plan. It's called gym care. <laughs> it's my signature health plan and all I did was just steal the best bits from everywhere else <laughs> for example in the UK and Australia you can buy private insurance on top of the government insurance which lets you jump the line and access additional benefits like it's like having a Disney fast pass instead of just jumping the line on rides you're jumping the line on chemo <laughs> that would that would make a terrible Disney ride <laughs> Next, Germany. In 2018, they're rolling out new ID cards. They let you access health records from anywhere in the country. Why is the US so far behind on this stuff? Germany already has a complicated relationship assigning people ID numbers. <laughs> if they can get past it, so can we. Now, next, the French. Now, the French are known to be a bit <laughs> Sorry, sorry. Trey <laughs> But their hospitals are quite compassionate. 
For example, a patient who has to stay overnight gets a bed next to him for his wife. And because it's France, another bed on the other side <laughs> for his mistress. And a tiny little bed for his wine and his cigarette. <laughs> oh, ho, ho, I am so sick. <laughs> it's going in gym care, I love it. <laughs> Next, China. Even they have us beat. They used to have the same for-profit healthcare structure that we have now. But in 2008, they made a commitment to ensure everyone in the country. Four years later, 95% of the population had healthcare. Think about that next time you're using your iPhone. Even the child labourer who made it has better <laughs> healthcare than you. <laughs> so that's my plan. Throw in Australia's subsidised insurance, France's compassion, Germany's technology, Colombia's reasonably priced plastic surgery, <laughs> Japan's cutting-edge treatment, Holland's highly versatile massage therapist, <laughs> and Britain's ability to pick beer glass out of your face with no questions asked. <laughs> That's gym care for everyone.